Good morning, folks. We've got an earthquake, solar wind activity, some news and weather to hit today, including an outlook ahead. But let's get started, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star very quiet. We finally did get sunspots after a couple weeks without them, but they came and came in silence and now begin to turn away with the coronal hole, having produced virtually nothing in terms of solar flares. Solar wind here. Slight intensification this morning, but we have to believe the core of the stream expected today will increase the plasma speed further and the geomagnetic conditions. But thus far, it has been a very slow onset to the stream. Eyes open today as the system certainly has set solar wind our way. You'll recall we were expecting at least one larger rumble before that stream arrives, and it took place midday yesterday in the Gulf of California. Magnitude 6.3 event was easily felt in the surrounding areas, but luckily, only the slightest of damage. Rough news at Hamaoka Nuclear Station. After finding radioactive deposits last year in the basement, they just found some more on the second floor this week. Good news is that neither incident resulted in detections outside of the facility. So folks, we had the purported neutron star merger last year with gravitational waves and the afterglow. Now regardless of whether you like standard, quantum, lambda, or electric models, the observations of a continued brightening in the X-ray and radio wavelengths is puzzling because the event is long over and should be fading away, not getting brighter. Now, their top explanation is that the blast heated a cocoon of material that continues colliding and interacting to create the continued brightening, and that may be more accurate than they realize. A terrific paper hit Cornell's archive earlier this week that looked at pulsars in the galaxy and found no even distribution and scattering of material, but rather compact plasma layers that formed unexpected patterns around the pulsars and they found these with every pulsar studied. Now, take a much grander event of the alleged star merger, the one that created the gravitational waves, and then contemplate how complex and large the plasma sheets or plasma layers would be in that instance, not to mention the added material of two objects to be heated instead of just the lone pulsar. Folks, if the event that made their gravitational waves is as powerful as a pulsar or more, there's your lasting effects, and as time progresses, the layers can interact and keep it going as well. So there's this asteroid of interest discovered back in 2002. It is making a close approach to Earth on February 4th. will still be more than 10 times the distance between Earth and the Moon. But it has been the target of speculation for a few years over danger in the future. But here we now know that this flyby has already told us that there are no passes that present any danger of impact in at least the next 100 years. Up next, better watch out everyone, beware. Major climate change effect, one of the most solid and fast acting and wide spreading pieces of climate change we should expect. More flowers in the forest, way more. Up next, we're at the Weather Channel where their forecasts for the coming months are out. If you recall our spring forecast, these March temperatures will bring that late season snow I was discussing. They also give a nice full spring outlook from March to May. The top story of the last day in weather hit Eastern Europe where that previous system closed roads and trapped more than a thousand people on the highway in deadly conditions in the Ukraine. The next system is already incoming there and will reach the UK by tonight. We've got the rest of the world on wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.